Hello, all you crafters and makers. Welcome to a special episode of Anders Mill Knits. Um, if you are a member of the 24 Days of Cheer Swap, this episode is for you. And if you're not, um, you know, I'm going to be po uh, posting another episode this weekend. So, you know, you can see Emily again on a different <laughs> episode. But for right now, I wanted to post to create this episode because um, this is the first swap that I've ever been the administrator of handling all of the doodads and I've noticed there's a lot of things that maybe I even I forget to tell people about I'm not being very clear about and there's a lot of questions that are coming up <clears throat> which have been all amazing you guys are making me remember or think about things that I didn't think about <laughs> so this is really good um, so right now I would like to go through all of the details of the advent swap for all of you who are members of it, and I forgot to get my computer going, so here we go. If it will work. Here we go. Okay, <clears throat> so this swap is a brainchild of mine in which I noticed there was a lot of people um, creating advent calendars, yarny advent calendars, for people like. Um, so that you would the 12 days of Christmas kind of a thing and maybe we should have gone with the 12 but we did the 24 so there we go <laughs> um and I was noticing that I re I really wanted to get in on this action but at the same time it was very cost prohibitive for me so I thought well I'd like to swap with somebody some minis then so why don't we combine it and uh so I came up with the 24 days of cheer and I did that because I, I named it the 24 days of cheer because I didn't want it to be solely about Christmas now what's ended up is that I think only one or two people are not Christmas related um, swappers so <laughs> it has become Christmas related and I think that's wonderful but I wanted it to be all-encompassing for anybody who whoever wanted to join from whatever religion or non-religion that you celebrate during the December um, season or month so with that in mind I created this and how it went was I sent out the call, I got a whole bunch of podcasters to join in with me, and the podcasters that are quote-unquote hosting it, I'm doing the, the brunt of the work because I honestly don't know how to break up the work to these other podcasters, even though they've asked me multiple times how they can help. You guys are amazing. But um, <laughs> I honestly had no idea how to get other people to help out. And maybe you guys can give me some pointers on how to do that for next year because I do want to do this again. But the wonderful podcasters that are hosting this with me are Hawthorne Cottage Craft, the Crafty Toads podcast, Never Cast Off, Caffeinated Knitting, Flame and Fiber podcast, uh, Giddy Knits podcast, The Delusional Knitter, Moms with Yarn podcast, and Daisy Knits podcast. And they've all signed up, so they're all, um, they're hosting slash, you know, help, helping get the word out so we could get a nice big group of people together from all around the world so that we could have, you know, everybody coming in. And we had an amazing turnout. We had over 70 people sign up for this, which was astounding. I had no idea we were going to have that. And sign-ups were open. I started it in August, and I, I kept the Google form open all the way through September 15th. And then I closed it. And then by September 17th, I created everybody's partners, and I put it up on Ravelry. And now comes the hard part. So... I've asked that everybody make contact with their partners by October 15th. And then your, your packages are to be mailed by November 15th. So the 15th is the key date, right? If you can just remember one date, remember the 15th. Everything has to be done each month on the 15th. So let's talk about why I had you go through the whole process of doing the Google form and everything. So. The Google form was set up so that you would give me your email address, your name, your Ravelry name, 
your um, holiday preference, your sheepy or non-sheepy preference, your weight of yarn preference. And all of that went into how I created. Oh, and if you're international or not, if you if you want the 25th extra skein, you know, the, the, hap, the happy big skein for the 25th day of Christmas. So all of that went into the algorithm <laughs> of Emily's little mind of how to create the partners. Now, it was as random as I could make it because I had to make little groups. I'm trying not to show um, people's names, but I made little groups according to, uh, say they like sheepy goodness. So everybody who likes sheepy goodness was in yellow. And then if they were, they're international A-OK, -okay, so they'll mail international, that's, that's, and then they want or they don't want. Sign me up for the 25th day skein. So I did all that. I color coded all of that in, in, uh, uh, what's it called? Excel. Then I cut everybody's names out and I piece parcel them up into all these different groups according to all of these things. Um, and then I made the partners by just grabbing into the pile and then double checking and triple checking and whew, it was, it was good. Um, and that's how you got your partner. So, um, so there literally it was all random except for the fact that I had to like make sure that people who wanted to only ship domestic and that actually was really difficult because some of the people who said they only wanted to ship domestic were in Europe and so like Ireland or England or Australia that's not Europe but you know what I mean and so I had to try to find partners that were in that region and so like I said it was as random as I could make it. <laughs> And I hope you guys um, have appreciated all of that effort. It's it was it was hard but really fun. Um, it's been actually it's been the most stressful piece of this whole process, um, and I'm glad that it's getting down down to being done. Because what I've now asked you to do is by October 15th. So I posted all of the names on on and everybody's partners on Ravelry. I magic linked all of you on Ravelry. And uh, when I did that, I put down say, so for me, I am partnered up. I don't even know where I'm at on this list. Let's see, I'm somewhere. Oh, there I am. AKA Millie, and then I have in parentheses Christmas is paired with Chris Loves Wool, in parentheses, Christmas. So what I did there was I just tried to give you who, what, what are the parameters of what holiday they wanted. And the rest is up to you. You guys got to get to know your partner, get their address, um, their, their likes, their dislikes, color choices, and everything else. All of that is up to you. I did this Google Sheet. From, for my own personal information so that I could make, create your, your, your pairings, your partners. There we go. <laughs> the rest though is up to you. I'm not going to give you any more hints. Okay. Now there has, and so you guys got to do that by October 15th. And as you do that, you let me know either on the RAV board or by private messaging me on Ravelry, that you have made successful contact, as in you have contacted your partner and they've responded and you now have a correspondence going. When you do that, I put a check mark off. I can't show you because it's got people's names. I put a check mark off on my sheets so then I know that you're good to go. And then I've even, <laughs> I even did a little detective work on some people. I've had to go and find them on Instagram or, uh, emailed them and it's all worked out wonderfully and that's another reason why I'm so grateful I had you guys fill out all of the information that I did so that if I couldn't contact you via Ravelry I had other means to contact you if I so needed in order to help the process of getting in contact with your partner arose um, we've had we've already had a couple partners that we've had one person drop out and then and, and so and at that time, we didn't have any angel swappers, and I'll get into who that is now. So I actually took on that extra person, and I'm so grateful that I did because she's an amazing partner too. So I have two partners, guys. Oh, it's amazing. Um, so, you know, all kinds of things have happened. And 
And so what I did was I created angel swappers, which other people do in other swaps too. Now, what is an angel swap? swapper? An angel swapper is somebody who is willing to step in at the last minute, hopefully not last, last minute, to send someone a package who whose partner either A, has not been in contact with them, has dropped off the face of the earth kind of a thing, or their package never arrived. So um, there, we've already got about two, I think two besides from me, people who are willing to be angel swappers. And I really appreciate that because that's double the work and um, that you, were have to do, you would have to do just for the regular swap. And I, I really appreciate that. But I know that this is also necessary. Even if, even if you angel swappers don't end up having to send your package that you created, either keep it for yourself and enjoy it next Christmas or that Christmas, or maybe send it to a friend, you know, that you have. Just having that on hand, and I will let you guys know by the end of October if you are needed. Um, well, I say that, but then hold on a second. But just having that on hand gives us that cushion of support so that if anything should happen, we we have backup a backup plan. So if any of you would like, I would like to have at least four angel swappers. So I need two more if possible. And I just said, so if you if you would like to be an angel swapper, go ahead and contact me via Ravelry. Now I just said I would contact you by the end of October if you're needed. That was the truth and a little bit of a what lie. Because by the end by October 15th you'll have let me know that you're in contact with your partners, right? But and then but so by the end of October I should know who else has dropped off out. Um, you know, as in that they're just not responding to their partner, their addresses haven't been exchanged or nothing. So I can take care of that. However, there might be one or two people at the end of November who are like, okay, I don't know what happened to my partner. Things were going well, and then I've never heard from them. Um, I've sent off my package, but I don't have anything coming to me that I know of. Or even come like December 1st or, or even 5th, they say, I don't know what happened. Because you, you should have your packages by the end, uh, the end of the month of November. Um... So, so especially you international people, be thinking about that in particular. If you're sending it international, when do you need to send your packages in order to get there by the first day of December, okay? And give yourself some cushion in there. Because now what's going to happen is, is if nobody has received their package by the last week of November, I need to hurry up and find those angel swappers who can then immediately send out the their cushion their extra packages if need be does that make sense i hope it makes sense yeah. um what is included in your package so you guys all know hopefully about advent calendars how people i've created a pinterest board so in case you didn't don't know and cracked i'm gonna go to my pinterest board on my phone and see if i can't um show you uh if i know where pinterest is on my Oh. Okay, so let's see. My boards? No, maybe later. Advent calendar. Okay, so advent calendars are such that they create like a Christmas tree. Um, is that making? Is that coming out? There we go. They created a Christmas tree with this little packages that are numbered on there. Oh my gosh, that is so not working. Um, and in each package is a little goodie. Like in my family, my mom, when I was very little, she took a piece of felt. I think she did it with a whole bunch of people from her church group. Took a piece of felt and then sewed on little pockets that are numbered for each of the days of Christmas. And at the bottom, there is a Christmas tree. So in And, and she decorated it with a little garland on there. So inside each part pocket, we would open up that day and there would be a little, um, <clears throat> what's it called? Oh my gosh, I've forgotten what these things are called. You put them on your tree. Uh, ornaments, there we go. I know you guys were all yelling at me. <laughs> 
So you pick out a little ornament and then you pin it on the felted Christmas tree down below. So that's our, and by the time you get to the 25th day, you have a decorated Christmas tree. Now other people have done that where they make those same pockets and inside is maybe a piece of candy or something. And so we're doing that sort of thing uh, and you can be as creative as, as you want with how the advent calendar looks. It doesn't even have to be reusable. Um, so, uh, and in each one is going to be a yarny goodness and the, the yarn, the mini skein of yarn needs to be about five to seven grams each. Okay. So, and that's going to be inside there. Now, there's also been a suggestion that we have maybe other little things included in this instead of just all 24 mini skeins. So some ideas to do are maybe like a little um, measuring tape. So that's my sheepy measuring tape. So maybe you could put that in there. Or I got this in a swap that I did with a good friend of mine. Um, and inside, I have now created a whole bunch of things. But inside, I've got some little progress keepers and you can just put progress keepers in um in your 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 advent calendar and so you can go on etsy and find a whole bunch of little things like oh for instance these tiny little snippers that i got in another swap that i did with another good friend of mine perfect for one of the days okay so you don't have to or some of the needles that we need to weave in our ends um, but you don't have to go out and buy all of these things. If you already have the ability to make some stitch mark minders or markers, then go for that. So like I collect a whole bunch of things when things are on clearance at like Joann's or Michael's. I collect things that I can then make into progress keepers later. So I can include one or two of these. Oops, that's upside down. I can include one or two of these. As progress keepers I had to finish making them but oh I love these these are little umbrellas so and I and you can get all kinds of lobster class kits and things like that off of Instagram so you can do all sorts of things like I've got a whole bunch of roses I've got I've got some windmills I've got a bunch of sheepy goodness stuff and so I've just collected these things that's not working I've just been collecting these things over the years and I just use them now when I send out packages because I want to add in something a little bit more personal to it. So then, so that's one thing that you can add in. Don't go crazy. Just add, if you want to add the, that little touch of, of differentness other than yarn and you don't have to, um, add in one or two, you know, or maybe three. Um, and as far as the yarn goes, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can create your package there. Now, um, I do want to note that I, want, I would like you guys to remember that I did make a stipulation that please try not to buy more than half of your minis if you are buying any at all. Remember, this is supposed to be a, um, this is supposed to be as economical as possible, okay? So, and I'm going to show you how economical I can be in just a minute. So here are some minis that I got from a swap that I did with my good friend Giddy Knits. Giddy Helen, I'm sorry, Giddy Knits is her, um, no, Giddy Yarn is her yarn, Giddy Knits is her podcast, and Giddy Helen is her rap name. <laughs> there we go. So this is something that she sent me, and then I just had some things on hand, Knitted Wit, I've got some little Smarties of theirs, and these are things I have on hand. I've just got, so you... So I've got a whole bag of these, right? Then, you know, all over my house, I've got little jars. This one's really dirty, guys. But I've got little jars full of little gumballs of my ends that of my projects. This one you see pretty much on every episode of my podcast. And then I've got bags and bags full. These are just two of them. I think I've got two more full of extras and they're just full of yummy goodness and I just finished a whole bunch of projects this week so now I've got four more right there right so you can so see look at all of this yumminess 
I mean, my gosh. So I'm just going into my stash. I don't actually intend to purchase any minis. Uh, my, my goal is to use up all of my minis that I have and spread the love and the goodness and then get a whole bunch back. It's going to be so cool. So how do you wind them up? So there's a whole bunch of different ways you can wind things up when they're minis. So you could wind them up into tiny little cakes. This is a little messy, but it, you know, your yarn winders to make minis, it makes it really sloppy and goofy. And, and when they're really small, this one is actually a pretty hefty mini. I think this one's 15 grams. So, and that's what that looks like. Then the, another option, this one's also a big one, but I have a small one too. You can make it into a little gumball. And here's my little one. I have no idea how much these weigh. Okay, then you can also make, oof, I can get it out, little skeins, teeny tiny little skeins. Then, okay, so I, I realized as I was talking that you might not know how to make these tiny little skeins, like this, like how Diabolical Yarn sent me her little um, sample. So what you can do is you can get, now this is a large one. This is a two yarder um, Nitty Naughty. And, but this is where you can wind on hand wound skeins to make them into these. You can get really small sizes off of Instagram if you want, or you could just use a little stick or something, like make your own. Uh, use the two areas between a chair or, you know, I have an idea. I've got an idea. So you can take your two sticks here and have your husband or your friend hold them up like this and you can just wind it like that between these two sticks. <laughs> See, it's it's just however you want to do it and however you, however you feel you can. There's another idea too that you could do, which is also to, you know, the, the little uh, cardboard markers for putting on embroidery floss? You could also use those to put them on, or you can wind them around your hand like this and then pull them off and tie it so that it makes a little bow. That makes sense. Maybe I can show you. So let's say that I'm doing this guy here. So I just hold it and I wind it and then it's not wanting to come out anymore because I have the thing. So then I would take it off and I would tie it in the middle here so I would create a bow for my advent calendar. All right, so those are a whole bunch of ideas for you, okay? And depending on how your partner is situated, they might want some worsted weight too. Now some people, a lot of people have indicated that they wouldn't mind getting some worsted weight and not just um, uh, fingering weight minis. So take, keep that in mind as well. Um, so then the question is, how do we package it up? We've talked a little bit about that. So I've just got some ideas randomly around my house. And these are things that I've been collecting for a long time, just in case I ever need anything. So these are pretty big, but big, but, but I got this whole set of, let's see, 30 bags of Gossamer, Gossamer bags that are pretty large. But I got this whole thing at Goodwill for 99 cents. I've also got one in blue with the same thing. 30. Those are all my days right there, right? That's more than I need. So I could put it all in, in one a day in each one of these. Maybe I would wrap it or something and put it in here. And I've got some clothes pins that I got on clearance. And maybe you could put it up on a, you could put it in a box and with the number one on each one and they just pull out the number one when they, you know number one two three four right and they pull out the bag that says number one on it and they open it up right or you can put it on a clothesline like that if you want or you can send them the kit so they can put it on a clothesline so there's that idea then another idea which i have been searching for a while for is i went to another thrift shop here in my area and I got not one, but two um, tablecloths that are really big, that are in the Christmas colors. Got both of these together for $1.50. 
That's right. And what I plan on doing, at first I thought to myself, okay, wait, hold on. First I'll tell you. So my bags, I'm gonna make bags. I'm gonna cut out bags. It's all gonna be out of this green fabric. I couldn't buy this much yardage for $1.50 at Joann's. So, you know, I'm being really economical here. It's great and I'm super excited. And I'm gonna make bags out of these. And then how am I gonna decorate it? Well, at first I thought I would, I cut off the red from this other tablecloth and I thought I would make little ruffles on each of the bags, but then I thought, oh, that, I don't know how I feel about that. We'll have to see. Um, so I still have all this fabric and I thought maybe I'll applique on the numbers. I've never appliqued. I have no idea how to do it. I don't even know if this fabric, since it's so thin, I don't know if it'll even work well with it. No idea. I'm gonna figure it out. And then I was going to put a little button on each one. So they have to unbutton it to get inside to get their yarny goodness inside, okay? So I'm not just making two sets, I'm making three because I want to send one to my best friend as her Christmas present. So that's how I'm going. I'm so totally random, guys, because I totally forgot to tell you about this. So these are just ideas, okay? I'm just going off the cuff here. I'm part of my randomness. So how do I know when I've got five to seven grams of yarn? I have a kitchen scale that I got off of Amazon for like $5 years ago. And all you do is you press the on off button, wait for it to zero out, and then you get one, like you get your little ball thing. Okay, oh, it has to be on a uh, flat surface. So let's get it on a flat surface first. Okay. Okay, it zeroed out. So this right here, is seven grams. It's perfect. I'm gonna put this in one of my things then. So there you go. That's one of my advent days. And all you do is you just you just go on and you read. You use oh I had it on ounces. Sorry. Let's go to mode. We gotta switch to grams. There we go. And we gotta tear it out again. Okay. This is only two point four grams actually so that's not good enough let's find out how much this guy was 11 grams so this is too much all right let's try one more shall we let's try this guy okay this is eight grams so that's about right that's a fair amount of yarn i thought this was too little i'm like nobody can make anything out of this so there you go about a gumball size this big Okay, so that's how I would suggest doing it. Otherwise, you're going to have to, like, I don't even know how you're going to do it if you don't have a measuring thing. But $5 on Amazon. It's a good pr price. It's a blade uh, scale. It's an AWS brand. So there you go. Okay, so let's see. I told you about everything, I think, okay? So that is about it for what I wanted to share with you on the angel swap. I hope you guys, your answers were, I mean, your questions were answered. Let me check one other place. I had a friend text me the other day a question, and I want to make sure that that's one maybe. Uh... Oh, somebody was wondering if they, if there was a Google, if they could have access to the Google swap, I mean, <clears throat> to the Google calendar for the swap. Answer is no on that one. That one's just for my records. Um, it's your job to get to know your partner and um, get their address and their information, what the colors they like, their preferences, whether they like cotton or sheep or, you know, those kinds of things, worsted or fingering, all that kind of stuff. Um, you will know if they are, a t um, I did, I did organize it in the, in the thread, um, according to groups. So those of you numbered one through 29 partners, you guys are all in for the big skein adventures. So all of you have to have a big skein, um, for the 25th day that you send to your partner. And again, that can be purchased or pulled from your stash, okay? 
Um, then numbers, uh, then under that, there's another group, mini skein swappers only. There are six partners in there. So those people are not sending an extra gift of the 20, uh, uh, on the 25th day for them. Now I have had a suggestion that maybe we can include, um, <clears throat> something a little extra, um, that maybe we can include maybe on the 11th day or 12th day, we can put in maybe our favorite recipe for the holidays um, or a favorite poem or thought or I think we should stick with recipe actually. Let's stick with recipe. So why don't we make that a thing now? So that's an official thing. On the 12th day, try to have your uh, a little slip of paper also included in your package for the 12th day that has your favorite recipe in it. I hope that's not coming too late for some of you because some of you guys are so freaking awesome. Like I've gotten messaged by two or three people who are already ready to send out their packages, like they're, or they're almost ready. I'm like, um, I've bought my supplies and I know what I wanna do. <laughs> and I know I, I have a lot of things to do, I just haven't done it. So, oh, I gotta get to it, guys. But I'm gonna spend the rest of today working on that. But <clears throat> thank you all for joining me for this special edition, this special episode of the Anders Mill Knits, talking about the 24 Days of Cheer Swap. I hope it wasn't too discombobulated for you. Um, I kind of did this off the fly, like I wrote down. This is my notes. That's it. That's all my notes. And it's really just talking about the dates that everybody has to have things done and making sure that I talk about the angel swappers. And the rest of it was just me going around the house, gathering up all my supplies, saying, okay, okay, this is a good, good, good idea. I should talk about this. Oh yeah, this could be included as well. <laughs> so I just, you know, I just went a little cry cry, as they say. But I thank you all for joining into the swap and I hope that we can make this a yearly event. Maybe tweak to next year somewhat. Maybe we won't do a full 24 days. Maybe we'll do something a little different. We'll see. But I'm really grateful all of you are in on this adventure with me. And remember to knit what you love and love what you knit. Take care.